Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? We have entered the time of guerrilla warfare and kung fu. Now that those are out of the way, wait, did you have any puns that you wanted to drop now or just want them to come naturally? No, I got nothing at the moment. We'll, we'll see what Kongs. I don't know. Oh God, that was that was bad. <laughs> it's not bad because it's coming from the Green Knight here in the den of the Doctor. It's been a while, hasn't it? Since it's been a while since 1984, guys. And now uh, there is another guest who is arriving, who I thought would be here before you arrived, but unfortunately, I don't smell Drakkar and Wire yet. Yeah, that's right. Yuri is on his way. Hopefully, he's going to be here very soon. Y'all remember Yuri? Who? You can't forget Yuri. No one forget Yuri. One will fall, as said in the promotional pieces and posters. And I guess, uh, yeah, both of them kind of tumble over a few times. They both fall a lot. But before we get to them, let's run down the less inspiring humans fast so we can just get through them to the two main bucking Broncos. Also, Yuri hates when I go on about the actors and such, so we'll get that out before he gets here. And the actors aren't important in a Godzilla movie. Yeah, you know, they... They're there, they're there for the story. They're there to set up the big monkey fight. Uh, they're there for Kong text. Kong text. <laughs> From least important to, well, as you said, the humans aren't really that important. Shun Uguri plays Ren Cesarizwa. That's the Asian Johnny Depp looking guy, right? Yes, the yeah. Asian Johnny Depp. With the millennial haircut that's all swept over. <laughs> I didn't know this until you actually pointed out he's the son of the other series as well in the f in, in the other movie yeah, correct let them fight yeah. that guy let them fight let them fight Kyle Chandler as Mark Russell he he was in the last movie Damien Bitcher as Walter Simmons is the new millionaire villain to inherit Apex Aza Gonzalez plays the millionaire's sexy sassy daughter who is clearly evil from the like she walks in her eyebrow goes up and you're like okay yeah she's the bad guy brian at teary henry is bernie an apex worker slash podcast conspiracist in which millie bobby brown's madison returns and becomes obsessed with teamed with julian dennison aka belschnickel fire fist what's that from that movie with the, the sexy Canadian guy. Oh, yeah, DP Dose. Yeah, I guess he was right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call him Belshnick. Rebecca Hall and Alexander Skarsgård, both scientists, one studying Hollow Earth. Another Skarsgård? Yeah. There's a bunch of them in Hollywood now. He must have a very, very expensive car. The other, uh, Kong and Skull Island, to which we introduce the very, very captivating Kaylee Huttle, the little Kong Poo Dog deaf girl, or for short, Gia. Directed by Adam Wingard, known for such majesties as VHS and Death Note. All right. All right, it's time. Big Daddy Z and KO to the NG. Friend has arrived. I, I'll, oh shit. Okay, he's not as late as I thought he'd be. I'll get it. Ah, is it too late? Has he spoiled the movie? Doug, what? What are you doing here? Wait, wait, wait. What's what's the problem? Where, where's Yuri? I have zero knowledge of this. What you call a Yuri? I have come to stop you. Stop you before you spoil the movie. Godzilla vs. <laughs> How about you, sir? Prepare yourself. Green Knight, yield. This is Doug. He runs a bowling alley. It has since been closed down due to the virus. Oh shit, Doug. I'm sorry to hear that, Doug. I am also a retired T-800. Can robots retire or do you just lose purpose? I think it's best we don't explain that part. Doug crashed my review of Terminator Dark Fate. Doug, meet the Green Knights. I am very much enjoying your mind and your hair. I enjoy my hair too. It's the most unicorn of hair. Let's get back to it here, fellas. Doug, you can have my spot. Here. Well, there goes my couch. We were just about to discuss our two main fellas, GZ and Kong. Are you asking the proper questions this time? What would you consider a proper question, Doug? For the monkey, who is responsible for the motion capture? Well, that is a good question, Doug. But I don't know. 
I Young. thought they used a real monkey. Well, a kudos goes out to the long list of animation teams that brought these titans to life. Both Kong and G-Zilla facial expressions, personality, and emotions were just so damn expressive. Both day, night, and even underwater. Kong was just a confused, growing last of his kind, searching for a family slash home. And where Godzilla, he was just a diva, strutting up and down the world, searching for competition to prove he's number one. I did like the personality they gave both of them. Yeah, Especially he, Godzilla, when he does the little chuckle. Yeah, he's just like, hey, hey, fuck you, man. Yeah. Well, even Mecha got- ah, Stop that! You stop it now! Either way, this is a spoiler review, so before we run down the plot, would you- Would you want to do the honors, Doug, of the spoiler alert? I have a function for this. Yes, I remember. Stop! Spoiler! Spoilers do to commence! I vote your attention, now let the spoilers commence! Jesus Christ, that is loud. Thanks. We start off via a Titan tournament style character card slash expo or a <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Right into a shot of our main man Kong snoozing in a containment dome. As the giant storm surrounding Skull Island, if you remember we saw in, well, Skull Island has now engulfed his hood. Also killing all the humans previously living there, all but one, Gia. Gia, a small deaf girl who has a connection with Kong, even teaching him sign language and making spectacular crafty little poo doll of him. I love it, I want, I love it. We learn that this dome is also made to shield him from GZ. Who is this now? Godzilla. Yeah, he's the, he's the king now, he's the... The number one fucker you don't want to mess with. <laughs> Things are getting things are getting interesting, so we cut to another human slash subplot Bernie. The psycho podcast guy recording a podcast on how he's gonna break into Apex. Oh yeah, the tinfoil hat wearing yeah. conspiracy guy. So he's recording this podcast as he's on his way to work and steals some shit. And he work so he works there and this this multi-million dollar company who's got this big social presence have no idea about it somehow. Have no idea about this podcast and now he keeps recording how he's gonna go break into the place. There wasn't any security. Yeah. He convinced the guy to leave by talking to him too much. Seems to be a trend in this series to have little to no security in these billion dollar corporations. That guard literal giant monsters. <laughs> Whatever. He's the first comedic relief we, we meet. He has to dip set mid heist slash after he finds a giant glowing eye. <laughs> Did you just robo sneeze? It was a reflex. Continue doctor. Robo reflexes, huh? Mm. Speaking of GZ, he senses some evil going on down here, so he has arriveth to stomp it out. Everyone is confused to why, until we see that eye. We did the alert already. You have a mission no more. Now relax, and just try to enjoy. Does not compute. Dr. Nathan Line, Skarsgård, is then recruited by Apex to help discover Hollow Earth. The world is hollow now, people, along with being flat, with a PH. If, if you think that's funny, that's cool. The Majestic Man is right. You are really funny, Dr. D. They explain to Nathan <laughs> they have this magical technology that can bring them to such hollow earth. And I do mean magic. The first Godzilla movie in this series was only set seven years ago, and they used all this believable tactical gear and weapons. But now... Now we have LED-ridden floating dinghy hovercrafts amongst other tech we'll touch in a bit. But this reminds me, a little fun fact. This film is made 59 years after the OG Godzilla vs. Kong when they fought each other on the big screen. Why does this matter? It's a fun fact, Doug. You wouldn't understand. I am aware of this fun factor. I am built with this deluxe flat. Now, where's that coming from? Please don't answer that, Doug. Skarsgård then recruits Eileen and Poodle Girl and Kong to help him discover this hollow earth and, well, maybe you could actually help me answer this one, Doug. What? How much chloroform does it take to incapacitate an ape of that size caliber? This question cannot be answered due to the reality of- It was a joke, Doug. Then once again, it was not funny. You, doctor, are not funny. Green Knight, 
Is is this true? I don't want to hurt your feelings. Um, okay. Either way, <laughs> they knock out Kong and ship his ass over the Aryan Sea. How do I know this? From Windows Movie Maker quality title cards that pop up whenever a new setting is presented. Kong wakes up and is presented with... A lot of fish. That's a lot of fish. But who cares? <laughs> who cares? Big Daddy Zilla is on the horizon and starts tearing shit up with his tail, fins, and amazing underwater candid shots. Here is where I notice their sizes to become inconsistent. They both have these amazing shots when they commence. Round one, fight! Unless they've somehow made gigantic aircraft carriers, like it, it seems like they're standing each on one aircraft carrier with room to do battle, and that's ridiculous. Yeah, and they got, you know, they got room to do the Dougie too, right? Like, aircraft carriers are big, but they're not hundreds of feet across, like they're not monster size. And I hope you dig Vertigo. After Godzilla takes round one, the humans think it best to play dead, so GZ will peace out. And so it be, he does. Is he the god of treading water too, or is his legs just extendable to reach all the way down to the bottom of the sea? Well, I had that thought in the King of Monsters poster when he's standing up out of the middle of the Pacific Ocean shooting a beam into the sky. He's got some quads, man. He's got some quads. We cut to the tenacious trio as they break into Apex, or to little, no resistance, and is super sped, transported, even teleported, you can say, to Tokyo with some monster eggs. Magic tech, once again. Arr. We've been spoiling everything so far. If you can't take it, then just leave. I have become comfortable. Then relax already, please. This is a spoiler-heavy review. But still. They discover that Apex has been cloning monsters to test out Mecha Godzilla. Something that trailers spoiled earlier uh, last year, this year. But he is telepathically controlled by Asian Johnny Depp via connecting to a Ghidorah skull we saw get, you know, trucked away in the last movie, which is now a supercomputer somehow. So he's controlled to Asian Johnny Depp, giving us his best O face in the process. You really enjoy those O faces, don't you? I, I, I can't stop. I think I, you might have a problem. You want to talk about it? Uh, we'll talk about it later. But alas, <laughs> its power source is not strong enough yet. And where we cut back to the other humans, oh, what are they up to? Well, they are airlifting Kong into the Arctic via an homage to the original being lifted by balloons. The Poodle Girl coerces Kong into a hole that leads him down into a an, dimensional wormhole portal, which pops them into Hollow which has a Land of the Lost vibes with dinos roaming and crazy giant flying snakes. And magical light sources that seem to shine out of nowhere. Yes. Kong likes to slurp down those snakes. A place with inception gravity flying around in, again, those magical LED hover jets where it's constantly sunset. But where the fuck does the sunlight come from? Exactly. They're, un <laughs> they're underground. It's not magic, though. Oh, no, no, no. It's science. Kong finds a secret door into a Kong temple, to a Kong throne in which he takes a seat. I mean, he really should have been voted in. I don't, I don't know what makes him think he can just take authority in this land that he's never been to. Damn it, Kong. Damn it. And then he finds Axcalibur. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, instead we learn that Kong and Zilla's ancestors have been duking and nuking it out for centuries. You could say it's even... hair hereditary. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, the fuck was that? Did you... I can laugh. Did you, did you actually just laugh? It appears I have. Congratulations, Doctor. Wow. Well... Kong also finds his axe caliber, as you say, his axe, made from a past Zillafin, and sticks it into some magic keyhole, lighting up the place with energy. Energy that is then 3D printed by the sexy sassy daughter and emailed back to Tokyo to power up your... You're twitching, Doug. Why don't you just say it? I have not seen this film yet. Then how do you know about the spoilers? Your dilated pupils and increased blood pressure. 
We're back in Tokyo, where GZ is tearing it up. He's searching for Mecha GZ, but alas, GZ feels this energy how many feet below him, pops a half squat, and fires a blast with his morning breath, drilling a hole all the way down to exactly where Kong and company is, enticing Kong to climb up slash down to Tokyo for round two. Somehow bypassing the whole interdimensional warp thing this time. Man, everyone's forgot about that by now. Once again, what an epically amazing fight it was. Simply visually stunning. It's in the dark mostly, like, you know, like most CGI monster bat bang ups, but so beautifully and cleverly lit up via Tokyo's neonness. The whole city looks like a TikToker's bedroom. I think it's the most epic scene in any media of 2021 so far. King Kong of Hong Kong whoops his ass with his glowing light up merchandise appeal axe, which he should have gone for the head, but he didn't. And Big Daddy Z quickly turns the odds around for round three. Really just a quick shooting match slash Kong is down before Big Daddy Mecha Z is awoken. And then of course Corrupts, now being controlled by the, the ghost of Ghidorah, making it Mecha Ghidorah. It looks like MGC is going to take the win against GZ, and so Kong is revived via being defibrillated by one of those magical LED hover things. You can do anything. Anything. More punches are thrown. Rocket punches uh, as well. Blue versus red lasers. Pew, pew, pew. And then the two team up and rip up Mecha Zilladora. Can you say delicioso? Well, no, actually. It's Belschnickel. Firefist. Josh Valentine. Who pours booze on his control board, skitting it out. So, who is the real hero here? Who cares? This review is long enough already. <laughs> God Diva, I should say, fucking guy, makes Kong drop his piece and bow down. They give each other props and then they both stomp off into their respective sunsets. Well, that wrapped up nicely. No end credit teaser setting up a royal rumble set up by aliens. No, that would have made too much sense and would have been too perfect. Tell me, honestly, was Mechagodzilla that evil of an idea? These humans only wanted to protect themselves from these giant monsters. Why is Apex the villain again? There was still indeed some dumbass writing, plot points, human scenes, with a few missed opportunities sprinkled about. That's a lot of fish. And no, save Mothra. Why did you say that name? Save Mothra. <laughs> Yet still a fun rock'em sock'em rampage. A lot of the scenery was beautiful, and the scenes were made so much more intense without a backing score accompanying them. Silence was used so well. Go into this movie knowing you'll have a great time, and just try not to understand all the mechanics behind it. I diagnosed Godzilla vs. Kong with an 8 out of 10. Popcorn horrific. Green Knight? Your diagnose. I give it four thumbs up, and I only have two thumbs. My horse gives it two thumbs up, because <laughs> it's a monster fighting movie, and that's exactly what it gives us. Like, we don't need to worry about what the humans are doing, because who cares? Grab a bucket of ale, sit down with your sweetheart, and just have a good time. Like, that's what it's for. Glad we watched it together, man. Mm -hmm. You're my sweetheart. Doug, what do you diagnose it with? He seems to be in some sort of resting trance. I'll, uh, I'll figure that out later. Farewell, dear Green Knight. A pleasure it is always and shall be next time. Until then. I bid you adieu, my friend. And let me know, would you want to see the next Godzilla movie as an alien-made Royal Rumble matchup? Again. Comment, like, subscribe, everything you do on Facebook and YouTube these days. I now, now I need to find a USB port to charge Doug back up. That port is not meant for plugging into. Sorry, I should have known. <laughs>